Hey guys, Carl here. Came down and made a video earlier and realized well, that just wasn't cool. But um, what I'm doing today was, you guys have been with me for a couple years now. I've never showed you how the darn thing works. <laughs> we got to do that. How the RS-1000 works. So let's start here. I used to have a bungee cord. You guys, you've seen that before and you can see the plastic here. But that was because I had a Bluetooth speaker and I'd listen to music while I ran. Got pretty loud. And also, because these are slip joints, um, they would loosen up because, um, believe it or not, the frame of this cat, with as rough as it is here for me, it twists a lot and will actually pop out of these. So I may put the uh, bungee cord back. Just keeps things a little tighter and nicer. Um, we start off with the old uh, GX, GX390, apparently an 18 horse Honda. And you'll see there, see the chain rolling back and around and forward. That's your drives. Yep. Got the good power plant. Chain, run off a direct drive around your idler into your forward drive sprocket, then down to reverse direction for your reverse drive sprocket, and then back up to the direct drive. Secondly, there is a pulley which runs a belt down here to this cute little hydraulic pump. Little tiny guy, he's cute. Pressure line here, which runs down and across, stays away from everything, comes up, goes over to your control quadrant for the hydraulics. Your return line runs all the way underneath everything, up here to an elbow, into the bottom of the tank. For the hydraulics, we have, I had to actually replumb it because I didn't like how the controls worked. I've always worked with cats and, and stuff, so well, I'm going to have to get a protector on that. Um, anyway, uh, so these were backwards when I first got it, and I didn't like that. So you got bucket lift, bucket lower, bucket tilt back, bucket dump. I like things to come up when I pull back, and I like things to go down when I push forward. Same thing with the log crane. Up and down. And with the winch on there, which of course has the uh, wireless key fob from Harbor Freight, and I wired in connectors which I can tape off and unconnect when I want to put the trailer hitch on there. But for now, I run keep this on for when I'm in the creek because I invariably get stuck and have to anchor off with the Harbor Freight Trencher so that I can get myself unstuck. And the winch is more powerful, or, you know, a 2,000 pound winch for a 1,300 pound machine, 2,500 pound, for a 1,300 pound machine with me on it, allows me to pull out pretty easy. So, we got our battery. A lot of extra space. You could put a foam pad in here and put tools in there, whatever you want, as long as you don't hit something metal between the two posts. You could use that for stuff. Right now, it just holds the cup holder on top. Park and brake has to be activated to start. Up and around the carriage bolt, up and over. But you'll see here, it's just a levered arm control rod to two disc brakes. You pull this sucker, you are not moving this cap without dragging the tracks. It is a it is a fantastic brake. If you have a runaway situation, rolling down a steep grade, just, it's gonna stop you. It's a fan, overkill in brakes, in my opinion, and just, just fantastic. Okay, so there, we have your chain. It's rolling around, driving forward on your top bar, driving backward on your bottom bar. And so, what we have are six drive belts. We've got two on the right, 
two on the left for forward, one on the right, one on the left for reverse. You push these forward, these white pulleys will rise against and tighten up the belts against the large pulleys. And see how much tighter they got? That is your drive forward. And you notice the, uh, the belts for reverse got much, much looser. Much looser. So, you pull them backwards. You, your drive belts get a lot looser, and yet your reverse belts get a lot tighter. And that is how she drives. Now, there is space here. You'll notice down here on the main reverse drive shaft, whether you all can see that, I hope so, there are two extra pulleys. You could get two more white pulleys and two more large drum pulleys on the axle and have twin drive belts forward and twin drive belts reverse. Maybe some of the other machines do that, which is why they use the one drive shaft. I'm not sure, but you could certainly upgrade this to have a lot more power in reverse. And you'll see me a lot when I'm driving that uh, I'm kind of fighting it in reverse a little bit. Um, it's enough, but having that extra power certainly wouldn't hurt. And so, anyway, when we're, you're doing this, you're doing that, forward and reverse, you're yanking on this sucker, it doesn't hurt a darn thing. The two drive shafts are separate. So you can, you know, run your individual, individual uh, axles. They come down here to a uh, very small sprocket, down to a larger sprocket, which gives you a lot more power for your uh, RPMs. And then they drive your, drive your tracks in these large sprockets out here. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, people are like, why aren't they hydraulic? Well, you know what? It only weighs like 1,200 pounds as it sits. Does it need that? You'll end up just spinning out. It's a, they've done real, really, really well. I've been thinking about putting some lights on here at some point, but that's certainly not very important. Good tracks, control levers, exhaust. I'd like to get a, uh, a better muffler. I'm, I'm noise adverse, but the belts and the chains are noisy anyway, and I may not save much. Bucket's still in really good condition. Put on auxiliary lights, which work much better than having them down here where they shine on the bucket. They work much better on top. I, I wish Struck would do something about that, but here nor there, what they give us is a good thing. But anyway, I was out here spinning a beautiful Sunday afternoon playing around and uh, thought I would show you guys just how cool the operation of this little machine is and uh, something I should have done probably a long time ago but I didn't. I guess I'm saving the best for last. You'll notice here how the uh, the cowling for the uh, driver are not slotted. They're actually a pass through hole so that, you know, this thing's got to fall all the way out for that uh, to come off because it's your seat mount. Good crank. Give that decent crank. Battery box cover, complete with cup holder. Bring it up a little bit. Set her down. I just use a carabiner. Put something on there if you want. Um, your uh, Seat guard assembly drops over hard washers, large slides back. You're always kind of pushing back anyway. Put your feet on the angles up there, and you, you're always pushing back in your seat. Make sure you stay in. 
And here, same thing. I did um, remove the seat safety switch, as you all know in a prior video. There you go, down flat, back she goes. I did that because I, with all my logging and silly stuff I do, I want to get off the machine without it running. Or let it keep running. So, I do that. And then, this chain always gets in the way, so you tuck it inside. Let it fall down. Crank her down. And crank down the other side. Like I said, I think I'll put the bungee cord back because unlike most people that use this machine, they don't abuse it like I do. I can feel the twist in the frame. And it actually works out of those cowling bolts. And uh, it is uh, a little disconcerting, but it's never been an issue. They built a good machine. And I wanted to show you guys, I don't know why it took so long, how the RS1000 works. Appreciate you guys watching. I uh, hope you have the best Memorial Days. Um, say thanks to a vet. Give thanks on your own to one that didn't make it home. I fortunately did. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you next time. And we'll, uh, we'll keep on playing. Take care, guys. <laughs>